Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Now what I wanted to talk about tonight was actually a, um, it's a beautiful narration that compares the validity and the virtue of tafakkur, of contemplation, to the virtue of qiyam al-layl, the virtue of praying at night. And how these concepts actually are married within the books of the Salaf, within the narrations of the pious predecessors. And it starts with a narration from Aun ibn Abdullah, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, I asked Umm Darda, uh, radiallahu ta'ala anha, about Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu. And I wanted to know uh, what his best form of ibadah was, what his best form of worship was. Now Abu Darda, obviously, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was one of the muftis of the companions, one of the most knowledgeable of the companions, and distinguished with his ibadah, and admired by the tabi'een, admired by the next generation, for the example that he left behind in that regard. And of course, his wife, Abu Darda al-Sughra, uh, is a scholar in her own right that was uh, sought out and asked many times and would often relay things on behalf of her husband. So Aun ibn Abdullah is asking Umm Darda what was his best ibadah. And particularly, by the way, there are two narrations. Ayu ibadati Abu Darda kanat akthar. And in one narration, afdal. So which of the acts of worship of Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu were most? Or which of them were the best? So what is his most virtuous and most distinctive form of worship? And what is his most frequent form of worship? Akthar. And she said that what distinguished him, qalat at tafakkuru wal i'tibar, to remember, contemplate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at tafakkur and i'tibar, to take into account, to reflect and to take into account. Both of them are within the same domain of contemplation, at tafakkuru wal i'tibar. Um, and she goes on to say that Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, tafakkuru sa'a khayrun min qiyami layla, to remember. Allah for an hour, and particularly here to contemplate for an hour, to contemplate for an hour is better than praying all night. To contemplate for an hour is better than praying all night. This is also something, by the way, that has been narrated on behalf of Hassan al-Basri, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, tafakkuru sa'a khayru min qiyami layla, that to remember Allah, I keep on saying to remember Allah because I'll talk about what tafakkur means in this context, but to contemplate for an hour is better than an entire night of prayer. Now, what is tafakkur and how is it related to qiyamul layl? And what is al-i'tibar? This is another word that often does not get introduced. You hear the words tafakkur and you hear tadabbur, uh, which are contemplation and reflection, i'tibar, which is to, to consider, to take into account something, um, is a word that's often not used when we're talking about this blessed practice. So let's first talk about the domain as a whole, inshallah ta'ala. You know, clearing your head, if you go out in nature and you don't do anything, you don't say anything, you just look around and you just take it all in, quiet everything, then that in and of itself is a means of really uh, opening up the pathways in your heart and in your, in your thoughts so that you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly so that you can consider the greatness of Allah and the greatness of your purpose uh, in, in, in um, you know, living in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed and what comes next after this life, the true meaning of this life and what comes in the hereafter and so on and so forth. You know, that practice of taking time out is incredibly not just therapeutic, but beneficial to your iman. And it's usually just talked about in the capacity of how therapeutic it is. And it is therapeutic to get time out, to breathe fresh air. But it's also extremely beneficial to your iman, beneficial to your faith. And it's increasingly become difficult to do that because of the devices that we have now that don't allow us to ever disconnect. And you have to disconnect from the world to connect with Allah. You know, it, sometimes you have to take those breaks. So if you have your phone with you, if you have your laptop with you, wherever you are, it is so hard to cut off everything for an hour to just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to think about him. And that's something that's very important here, that the nature of contemplation here in tafakkur is not one where you're just enjoying the outdoors, 
but you're looking around and as you are enjoying the outdoors and you are looking at the signs of Allah as they are so observable to you, you're saying, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, La ilaha illallah, Alhamdulillah, right? You are alternating between the various uh, recitations of athkar, of remembrances that we learn from the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam and deeply considering those things. So tafakkur is to contemplate on the signs of Allah, to contemplate on the verses of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, and it should provoke a sense of remembrance. So saying Alhamdulillah, saying SubhanAllah, saying Allahu Akbar, saying La ilaha illallah, going between those various verses of praise, those statements of praise and those statements of remembrance is a way of keeping you connected, not just to the signs that are around you and contemplating them, but also connecting you to their maker and your maker, which is the ultimate goal of that tadabbur and of that tafakkur, right? So that's where tafakkur usually comes into play. It is contemplating on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you contemplate those signs. And the quality of your worship that comes after that is incredible, right? If you do that, then the quality of your worship at night the quality of your five salawat, the quality of your ibadat as a whole is just going to increase substantially. And there's also contemplating on the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many scholars uh, say that's where tadabbur is distinguished, which is another you know, form of, of remembrance and introspection, but particularly pondering upon the verses of Allah, reading the Quran and, uh, and reading uh, those verses of Allah, those signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you are interacting with the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside. And have you ever read Quran on the outside in nature, right? It's a beautiful thing. So reflecting on the verses of Allah, uh, looking around at the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting yourself to those things. And then some of the scholars say i'tibar is a very unique type of reflection. Uh, like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاعْتَبِرُوا يَا أُولُوا الْأَبْصَارِ uh, to, to take into account, O oh, people of Al-Absar, of, of, right? People who are of pure thoughts and people who are uh, pure in their vision because of the purity of their thoughts. They are in contemplation and they think clearly. They have clarity of thought. Uh, some of the scholars say, I'tibar here is reflecting upon what happens to other than you and taking it into consideration in regards to yourself. Because when Allah Azza wa Jal talks about I'tibar, He talks about previous nations he talks about other people. And so when you see things happen with others, past or present, you take that into consideration for yourself. Or some of the scholars said, i'tibar is just generally uh, taking yourself to account, uh, reflecting, um, receiving things very personally as they're happening to seemingly other than you, whether that's the environment or people around you, receiving them personally, right? What does this mean for me? What does this mean for me? So again, contemplating on the verses of Allah, contemplating on the signs of Allah, contemplating on yourself and how you can bring yourself closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then taking it all into account, whether it's happening to others or happening to the environment, taking it all into account as to what this means for me. So this is where you find the statement, تَفَكْرُ سَعَى خَيْرٌ مِنْ قِيَامِ لَيْلَةً to contemplate for an hour is better than praying an entire night. This is also, by the way, uh, very much so connected to what we've been talking about of purifying your thoughts. And fasting is directly tied to purifying your thoughts. And so as you're purifying your body and purifying your soul and purifying your thoughts throughout the day, then the quality of your qiyam, the quality of your taraweeh, the quality of your i'tikaf just is so much more because of your fasting during the day. And, you know, just think about, you know, if if uh, if you don't have and of course, some people are not able to fast. Right. And the difference between um, being able to fast and being able to pray at night uh, and the connection of those two and not being able to fast for those that have an illness or are permanently unable uh, to fast during the day. Right. So there's a beautiful connection between the two uh, as well. And even, of course, those that are not able to fast due to health reasons, medical reasons, the amount of Qur'an recitation that takes place during the day of Ramadan and the contemplation therein certainly increases the quality of the prayer in the day and especially at night. And I'll end with this inshallah ta'ala because it is the merging of the two things. And that is what Ibn Abbas ta'ala anhuma, uh, said where he said two rak'ahs that are of moderate length. Okay, that are of moderate length. They're not super long because people are used to 
lengthy rak'ahs. They're not super long, but they have in them tafakkur. They have the quality of contemplation. خَيْرٌ مِنْ قِيَامِ لَيْلَةٍ وَالْقَلْبُ سَاعٍ is better than uh, a, a night of prayer, praying the entire night. And the heart is sahin. The heart is is uh, is neglectful. The heart is absent. Okay, forgetful. So if you are able to pray at night, and you are able to bring in the quality of thought, and of course with Qiyamul Layl, reciting a verse and pausing and doing du'a, uh, thinking about that verse, remembering Allah and supplicating, is something that we find from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, especially in the night prayers. So to have shorter prayers, less recitation at night, but increase the quality of those prayers with more contemplation, with more tafakkur, is better than a forgetful heart, an absent heart, and long prayers uh, throughout the night. So with the whole quality and quantity discussion, that's something certainly to keep in mind. And inshallah ta'ala, next week I'll actually uh, talk about how to read Qur'an, the debate over quantity versus quality when it comes to Qur'an recitation, because I know that's also a question uh, that often comes up. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to remember him day and night, that he protect us from our uh, fr- from being absent-minded and being led astray in the process of being absent-minded, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be connected to him through good moments of reflection and recitation and then good uh, moments of prayer and uh, good works, good deeds that connect us through him subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan during the day and during the night, fasting or not fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always allow us to be connected to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to always be thinking of him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have the ultimate reward of meeting him while he is pleased with us subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan.